Giants have regained the lead. Home run Buster Posey. And their cleanup hitter. The potential MVP of the regular season. And the comeback player of the year. Has now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95-7 The Game. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, you, you hear Joe Buck there say Buster Posey in this town. This is what's so exciting about this. You don't even need to use his last name. He's one of those, like, Madonna-type people. Right? Buster. Yeah. They made a change. They hired Buster. <laughs> That's it. That's all a Giants fan needs to know. And um, I would imagine Giants fans would love hearing from another favorite today here on Willard and Dibs, and that's why right here on the River Islands guest line, we're bringing on Hunter Pence. Hey, Hunter, what's going on? Oh, my God, you make a great point, and it, it is an exciting time. I got chills right now. I, like, MVP caliber, three-time World Series champion player taking on this task, and, I mean, what does that tell the, the city, the, the organization, how much he cares, and he wants to see a – a certain standard and and it's uh it's exciting i mean as someone who was a teammate and you both took leadership roles but different styles like how would you describe what buster has as a leader that you think will work in this role i mean he, obviously he has a lot of poise he has um he's he's brilliant he's respected and you know just everything he does is is methodical everything he does makes a lot of sense um, and you know, he's just so, so brilliant and, and extremely witty, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I, it's a, it's a gamer term, but he's five head. He sees up many angles and, and like having that as your catcher and then having that as your GM, the catcher has to, you know, be able to juggle so many things like the, what does the pitcher have that day? What is the, the, the batter strong at? What's he doing right now? Has he moved in the box? Also, I got to hide the signs from the, you know, the, the base runners. And he did all of it like effortlessly and gracefully. And he is also like leading in the clubhouse, like every single person, he kind of sees what's going on and has a way of like pushing the right buttons. I mean, for me, uh, and I'm, I'm rambling here a little bit and just giving you a, a you know, a Twitter version of, of so many amazing things I saw from him. Uh, there was no co coincidence in the three world series championships when he arrived. And, uh, it, he, there's no better baseball mind. I think that this is just a glorious day as a Giants fan. How much does his gravitas and his reputation around the league matter when it comes to wooing free agents? Um, I think it does matter. I think it, it matters a lot to be honest. And, um, you know, I think uh, players that are free agents and players around the league are now kind of, you know, and, and you got to believe that there's going to be a system that kind of makes baseball player sense. And, and there's a difference between, uh, and, and not to like say anything bad because I think, you know, far on is brilliant and amazing, but like, it doesn't really jive that much. A lot of the things that are asked and the moves that are made, um, there's kind of a, uh, you know, when you're in the thick of things and how things are run that like, you know, you watch kind of the way the Braves go about business. You watch the way, uh, you know, some teams that have been doing great successful things for a long time. And uh, there's a human element involved and there's a certain, um, I, I, yeah, gr standard. And I think that that's going to be expected on the, on the Giants now versus like, you know, always there's matchups and matchups matter, but there's everyday players. There's certain things. And, 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 and Farhan was listening and moving to that, but I think players want to play for that. Players want a chance to pitch more than four innings. They, they want to show that they can win a game, throw a no hitter, do something spectacular. Uh, they want to play every day. And I think just getting that opportunity and having a system that wants you to go and be as great as you can be. Um, and, and once again, I just think that, that, that Buster has a certain standard that players are going to want to play for 100%. Hunter Pence with us on Willard and Dibs. And, yeah, Hunter, I, I think we gather what you're saying, and, and nobody wants to, uh, you know, kick Farhan in the butt as he's on his way out the door, but I want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. How, how do you think players dealt with the idea of, well, you're brought here to be an everyday, now you're platooning, or the up-down to Sacramento that seemed to be – something that was constant during this last six years of baseball. Is is it fair to say players did not really jive with that? Yeah, I think it's easy to say that. And and you just got to like put yourself in a player's shoes, right? Like you're a teammate and you're sending, it's a revolving door. Like every time someone got sent down, it is like a massive life change and it's a massive change to everyone 
in the in the clubhouse. Like we feel the pain, and obviously, yeah, someone's coming. But like you know, there's just certain things that you just don't do. Like and and like you can't really get a rhythm or a, a culture or a or, or a purpose because you know, and, and even just biting into that, you can't play versus righties, you can't play versus lefties, and 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 all of that is like it's like a, a message that we're not good enough and uh, a message, you know, like, I, like even like, for instance, and, and nothing against that because mathematically, like if we were all robots, it should work, but we are humans with emotions and um, we, we, we strive with like purpose lifts us up. And um, you know, there's a lot more intangibles throughout your numbers going on with like, like maybe one day you go over four, and, you know, and this was off right, but you figured out how they were getting you out and you come back the next day with a little bit of knowledge that you can use as an intelligent player against them and be like, oh, they got me like this. I'm going to be ready for that. Prepare the next day. And then boom. But now you're benched because it's, you know, not the right matchup or whatever. So, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's more the family element of like, you lose a little purpose. You lose a little spirit when you're doing this revolving door, you're trying to, you know, catch every, every little deal. I, and, and, and I don't know how Buster is going to GM by the way. I'm, but I know that there's a certain thing that he understands with, with regards to, you know, the Sabian um, and how he, how he handled things with, there was a long integrity. You earned it. It was hard to earn. It was hard to lose, but when you lost it, you lost it. And when you got it, you got it. And you had to really earn your way out of the lineup, earn your way in the lineup and, and kind of, but you can build a culture, you can build a family, and and players want to play for that, and fans want to want to root for that. Like a lot of times, and, and and by the way, as a player, you want to do what's best for the team, whatever it takes to win. But for the business side of a player, you're biting a huge bullet to do that for the the team. And and like when you treat the player like he matters to you, that it's not just the numbers that he puts on paper. Um, you're, you're sending a message that makes them walk a little prouder, walk a little taller. That that in giving him that opportunity, you earned it. You you go and you pitch five innings and you win a huge game. And yeah, we need an arm, but you've earned the right to still be here. We're not going to just send you down and bring you back up and fly you all. You know, it's just like these things. It's tough to swallow a lot of times because we are humans. And and like give that guy a chance, let him sit here, let him come and pitch again for you. And everyone kind of just starts walking a little different. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it's a very tough thing to swallow when you send a player down every single time yeah. and you're doing it constantly. It makes perfect sense, Hunter. And that's, I guess my follow-up question is, is it too simplistic to say that that is why the Farhan way for lack of a better way to describe it didn't work because it was too much about the matchups and the math and not enough about the humanity. I mean, I, I don't want to just, I, I do think that, I don't want to just say that why it didn't work for Farhan because I I think he's extremely smart. Um, you know, I, I but I do I I personally think that that's a very challenging thing for players to manage. It would be hard as a leader on a team run like that to get buy in. Yep. Yep. Okay. And and so what about this? If you're Buster Posey and you've been watching all of this. What what do you what did you kind of learn from the last six years that that will help you in in where the Giants go next? Well, I do think if you were in the playoffs right now, the way we were playing this last month, and and by the way, I think um, let me just set, to start here because there's a lot. I feel like I've gone a little bit harder on Farhan than I wanted to for this, uh, but I am excited. I do think players are going to want to come here because. Once again, I think Farhan made great deals. He worked amazing, and, and I know he's going to continue to succeed in baseball and learn valuable lessons. Uh, I think this year he even – it was easy to say that he put a team that we expected to make the postseason. Like everyone – it was easy to believe that, and the fact that we didn't was a bit of a head-scratcher. And it just didn't click this year for whatever reason. But at the same time, if we were in the playoffs right now – I would still believe we could win the world series because we are playing our best baseball this last month. And we went through teams that needed wins playoff teams and just dismantled them. Like we, the, the Diamondbacks might not get in the playoffs because how we played in that series. And, and like, the, and some of these rookies are showing, we had a lot of young players step up that did massive things, but just imagine if we were able to get Snell a little bit sooner and we saw that for the entire season and just the confidence when he takes them out and how dominant he was, 
and every it just kind of lifts everyone up. There's a little bit of a momentum, whereas he was playing on the back foot, and we were playing kind of on the back foot the whole year. But if we made the playoffs right now, how confident would you be? I'm pretty confident. I mean, uh, when you've got a, a rotation <laughs> like that, I, more confident than I would have been three it, weeks ago. Anybody's, for sure, anybody's got a puncher's chance, but but you know, Hunter, how people feel about this roster versus the glitz and the glamour of the lineups that that are thrown at you by some of these other teams in the National League and namely the Dodgers in the division? I mean, I would feel great having the way Blake Snell was pitching going game one versus anybody. And, like, the Dodgers have a great lineup, but do you think they're going to they're gonna definitely win the World Series? I mean, what is, who's going to – they, they got to pitch, right? Like, sure they can't not. match our yeah. pitching. Um, we went to Baltimore and destroyed them. We went to Kansas City and swept them when they needed wins. We just took out the Diamondbacks who were on, on absolute fire. And and by the way, once there, there's a couple little adjustments um, with with uh, Hayden Birdsong, and this dude is going to be Tim Linscombe Energy. Like he just struck out 11 on four and a third in the last game, and he did it with like you you see the swagger. And this kid's 21 years old. Like look out, um, there is a lot of talent. The way we were playing, uh, Landon Roop even was 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 having great starts. Um, but you're telling me Logan Webb. Uh, Blake Snell one and two, they can get you through a series right now. And and I mean Matt Chapman is swinging the bat. They made some major. If you ask me, and I would like to hear from him because I see it, uh, incredible swing adjustments, and he is just a tank. And for me, I think that right now, the last last two weeks, maybe maybe I have the month is too long. The last two weeks, we were ready for playoff baseball. We just unfortunately faltered early on and had a lot of setbacks. Yeah, couldn't quite uh, get over the line over the last couple of weeks much better. So if you're sitting in Buster's seat and you look at what you have and you mentioned Chapman, he's a tank, and you got some young pieces and a good couple of young arms in the rotation, what do you look at as the number one job or the first thing that you need to improve to get this team to where you think they could be? You know, well, we definitely have, honestly, it, it is a core that you can see that a window is near. And... It is, it is like, it's about that time. And with some of these young pitchers, it's going to be interesting to see like how many of them actually improve, how many of them, you know, like that's going to really matter. Um, But if we lose Blake Snell and, you know, most likely that might happen, how do we get better? Because he was, he's as good as it gets, like absolutely dominant. Those, the last three starts that I saw from him were, were, like it was, it could have been a no hitter every night if, if circumstances went well. And it was just like, if he's commanding the strike, it doesn't matter how good you were, you were out. Like Bobby Witt maybe had the only hard hit ball I saw off of him in three starts. So that was ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, you're going to need to get another Blake Snell type arm. I think, you know, the lefty for the Braves is out there. I believe uh, Corbin Burns is that caliber. Um, so obviously you're going to need a, a starting arm. We're going to be counting on Robbie Ray and Robbie Ray is an absolute beast and having him healthy for a full year, letting him, you know, it takes that surgery a little time to kind of get, get going. And I think that we're going to have some special stuff from him. So we have a core and, and remember Ramos just made as a rookie, the all-star team. He has a great approach. He's really strong, really fast. Tyler Fitzgerald could, you know, maybe a second base option because we expected Tyro to have a better year than he had. I don't know what happened there, but that was definitely an Achilles strike. So um, shore that up a bit. Um, and and, and Jung Hu Lee coming back is going to be big. So there really is a, a big window and it's some micro adjustments. It'll be interesting to see what he does. Um, I, I, I have no idea of his thoughts, but I do know that he's going to want more everyday players, and that's why I think it was really important for him to sign Matt Chapman right off the bat. Um, Hunter Pence with us on Willard and Dibs. E- even though I sort of get the same vibe as you do, I'd love for you to expand on why you think it, it, it seemingly is unlikely that Blake Snell will be back. Well, actually, I don't know now. And now I hope I hope he comes back. I mean, it, it's going it, to it's pretty much going to be anyone's ball game, right? Like he earned it and. Um, you know, we'll see where he wants to go and how he wants to do it. But if you're asking me, I, I would love to have him. But, um, you know, and, and you've already heard how, how highly I talked about him and, and what I think he's capable of. I think when you have a Blake Snell, you have to have that caliber. It's the blue chip arm, right? But he's probably the best of the best when healthy. Like, he was a Cy Young winner last year. 
he had and, and and not having a spring training and trying to rush and trying to force it um we really didn't give him an opportunity to succeed and he he had a couple injuries didn't have the mechanics right and when it came together and this is probably what you're going to get for the next 3 to 6 years from him um is probably the best arm we're going to see in the next the next 3 years he's probably going to be the best arm we see and uh he's just that good so there's a couple guys out there that are on that echelon, but probably not to his talent. Like the talent is just insane. And it's just, I don't care how good you are. I'm just better. And the only thing is, is he's really just battling himself. Can he throw strikes? And is that Hunter, the way that you would look at it as far as how you build this team back into a winner? Cause I think about your team in 2014 and 10, 12 and 14, it was pitching and defense and the ballpark we know is not very slugger friendly. Is that the way that the Giants need to to go in terms of how they get this team to be better? I mean, that's what I, I would go with. I, that's what I, I believe in it to my core. Um, there was definitely way better superstars. I mean, we in, in 2012, obviously Buster was the MVP, and we had some you know our, some star power. Pablo did what he did, but it was Prince Fielder and Miguel Cabrera. Well, I think Miguel Cabrera won the Triple Crown or something that year, um, and, and 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 they were great. So. We were never the best offense, but we put the ball in play. We played extremely good defense. We were gritty. We all loved to be out there. We also, you know, we had our confrontations within us, but it was all confrontations for competitiveness, for bringing out the best in each other. And, and those things are one, one thing, you know, you talk about good chemistry and, and, and the military is where you probably want to study this. They'll talk about you have to be able to confront your comrades. And, and these are things that I think are healthy. I think this is one of the reasons they love you know, the Chapman leadership vibe. And so it's okay to have a little friction. It actually grew, it, it raises you up. And so I would look for that. I would look for some feisty, some stubborn players, some crazy players. Um, that, you know, it's a little bit of a risk to be out there. So uh, I know Buster's going to probably have a better idea of all of this than me. Um, but I think that pitching and defense is definitely a blueprint. And everyone says, oh, we need the star player. We, the stars will come when you're winning ball games, And you win ball games through pitching and defense. But you do you, you do have to score. But I, you, you have Chapman, you have Ramos, you have Jung-Hoo Lee. Uh, maybe one more bat, a uh, second baseman, I think particularly they're going to target. And we'll see. Hunter, what do you think Buster's first order of business is? You got to have to ask. I, I haven't had a conversation well, with what, him. Like what? But if I it mean, were you, if it were you, what if I, he asked you? Now, I mean, first order of business is, is 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 there's a lot. It's it's not just like one bullet point, but I think first order of business is set a standard, set a culture, um, get those things in order, like a clearly defined purpose. Uh, get on the same page with Bob Melvin so that we're getting players that he believes in, players in a style that he wants, but also um, a style that you both want. Like it's, it's basically your style, but with Bob Melvin's input so that we're working in harmony. But I think it's, it, it's a clear standard that needs to be set, clear accountability that needs to be set, that, that like winning is what matters. I'm going to be around. I'm going to push you. There's going to be pressure to win. And um, I think that's, that's number one is like you have to define who you are before you can do anything. And if asked, would you serve on the Buster Posey front office cabinet? I mean, I, I would love to be a part of it. I really, really genuinely love this organization. Uh, I love the city. And, uh, yeah, so I, I would definitely be, uh, be, a, be, a, be on Buster's uh, advisory board or, where, or wherever I can help, you know. And I'm enjoying the broadcasting and and honestly, Farhan would listen to me. Did he? A little. He would. He would listen to me. So he would let me. He would hear me out, and that was great. And so hopefully, I can, you know, be on the same page and and do what I can to help this organization in any way possible. Uh, I am a fan. It, it it hurts when we don't make the playoffs, and I, I genuinely do believe in this team. And and honestly, like I said, this year was a bit of a head scratcher because I thought we had a team to do it, and I really do believe in this staff as well, Pat Burrell. Uh, Matt Williams and and Hallberg and the, and the whole crew. It's it's it, it's a really great crew. Hunter, I know you are actually a great baseball mind, but I've got you maybe for director of spirit. I, how, how do you feel about <laughs> about that role? I mean, yeah, no, I I think that that stuff matters. Uh, I obviously believe in you know the bringing energy every day. Like enthusiasm is something that 
if you're playing in it with a, with like, even if you're in a front office and there's no enthusiasm, if you're in a business and there's no people are what make businesses work, the business doesn't just work on its own and people with enthusiasm, people with charge, people with positive mental attitude with overcoming with persistence and consistency and with constant fight because negativity surrounds everyone in every, every industry. And so that's easy to fall into. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do appreciate that, but anything that I'm going to come for and I really care about, I'm going to come for full heartedly and I'm going to go down in a blaze of glory with everything I got, no matter what. We know that about you, Hunter. Thank you so much for your perspective uh, today. Thank you. Great to have you, man. Yeah. Wonderful talking with you. And before you get me off, if we have a moment, yeah. what would be your first order of business? Ooh, that's a very, very good question. Uh, the first I mean, order. You asked it to me. It wasn't yeah. a good question. I yeah, want to hear. Tell him about his fair play. Tell him, Hunter. First order of business to me is going to be, um, it, it's along the lines of what you're saying. I, I think that Buster needs to set a standard of uh, in that clubhouse of making sure those players know that their voices are probably about to be heard in a different way. That's what I would say. Yeah. Is that a cop out right. of an answer? <laughs> but that's what I, mean, I would, that's what no, I would do. I, I think, like, I, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good point. I think it's a good point. It's like, we need to get the direction going. We need to get the message out of who are we and uh, how we go about our business in the, in the black and orange. And it matters. It matters to define that. Hunter, thanks, man. Really appreciate All right, it. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Yep, you too. Hunter Pence right here on Willard and Dibs. I know that those are like people want to be like, sign Juan Soto. Right. Like, like you know, some sort of a headline grabber. Well, and that's I, not the first order business. It'd be cool if they did that, yeah, but he's busy right he's now. He's busy, not eligible. But, but yeah, like I, I, and I don't want to make that sound like I'm thinking like the players are going to run the show by any stretch. But I do think this is important for people to, to understand. I firmly believe that the players were not constantly, but off and on over the last six years, I think it wore them out emotionally to be told that you can't hit against lefties or that you're, he you're heading to Sacramento or remember when the Hayden Bird song thing happened and uh, the kid – fans 12 at Coors Field and finds himself in the San Jose clubhouse the next morning, even though there was a good reason. Right. I'm sorry. Like, to, to me, that's not a good reason. So, too much of that. And, and I think that those players need to hear that directly from someone who's been in their, in their shoes, in this case. Yeah, no doubt. And that's the guy. Buster Posey's been in their shoes in this case. And I, I imagine he faced a lot of righties in his day. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. Latos was a righty. Uh, we're presented by Fremont Bank, celebrating 60 years of full-service bank with no compromises. All right, it's your turn. Dave Fleming's going to join us at 415, but coming up next, 888-957-9570. Farhan's out. Buster is in. Does that bring you back? We're taking your calls. Are you back? 888-957-9570, Willard and Dibs. In the meantime, it's Dan Dibs.